This lecture is about marine aquaculture, the fastest growing food sector in the world. You will learn in this lecture that eating a tuna is actually like eating um, a wolf eater if it was an equivalent food chain on land. You will learn that most of the aquaculture production currently is not sustainable and that we are partly actually taking protein away from the human population. It's badly needed and finally you will learn that saving or protecting the fish stocks is best done by managing the fish stocks and not by replacing wild caught fish by aquaculture fish. So let us first look at the global production of uh, food from the sea. You clearly see is that around the 1990s uh, the wild capture fisheries leveled off at a level of about 95 million metric tons per year. Um, very much in contrast to the dark blue which shows the almost uh, exponential rise of the aquaculture food production from waters in general. So at a first glance we may think okay so aquaculture alleviates the pressure from the wild fish stocks that cannot yield more catch to human nutrition. Let us dissect now more what this dark blue sector is, the aquaculture production. And here we quickly see that aquaculture is actually a lot of freshwater fish. So 60% or something uh, are cyprinids uh, that are mainly grown in East Asia. Then we have a large section of uh, crustaceans like shrimp and bivalves such as oysters. And the fraction of fish is actually quite small. So actually here the production of, uh, uh, of seafood in terms of harvestable fish that could alleviate the pressure on fish population uh, looks quite limited already. We also need to have a look at, at how the aquaculture is organized. Evidently recirculating systems based on land need huge infrastructure and have a very high energy demand so in terms of their carbon footprint, they're hardly sustainable. At a medium level, we have, for example, net pens um, for sea bears or for salmon. And at the lowest level, we would have, in a way, passive rope cultures of mussels and algae that need no additional feeding. This is very important to keep in mind if we look at the general overall sustainability of an aquaculture setting. What's now the general problem with having marine fish in an aquaculture setting? We, we need to be uh, aware of that the food chains in the ocean are much longer than on land. So whereas on land we have the cows as the first consumers of primary productivity, uh, in the oceans these would be tiny crustaceans and they are simply not suited for human nutrition. Conversely, if we eat a mackerel, the corresponding trophic level on land would already be the eater of a wolf eater. So that's a, evidently a fantasy animal which doesn't exist on land but it very well exists in the form of large pelagic predators in the oceans. So in other words if we want to keep uh, sea bass uh, or sea bream or raised tuna we have to feed them with other fish. These other fish are called forage fish. So those are mainly small pelagics which are caught uh, at a rate of about 20 million tons per year. So let's have a look at the budget. So 18 million metric tons are then converted into, they are basically dried, are converted into 6 million metric tons of fish oil and fish meal. And they then go to livestock feed on land, about half of it. And uh, another fraction goes to aquaculture. We ignore here now the freshwater portion. And then we see that about 2.1 million of those forage fish derived feed goes into producing fish in marine aquaculture. And if you remember now, we have about 2.5 million tons production of marine fish in the aquaculture. You see that we have uh, a one-to-one -one relationship, which is actually worse because we have dried fish oil and dried fish meal. So at the moment, actually, we lose we lose protein that could be available for uh, human nutrition in poorer countries when we feed those small forage fish to larger marketable 
uh, fishes such as sea bream or sea bass. So what could be solutions out of that sustainability dilemma? One solution is to replace the fish-derived protein um, by plant-derived protein, for example, from soybean or rapeseed. And this is happening. Um, so there's, there are really intense uh, research uh, projects trying to replace that. And um, there is uh, now cons considerable progress has been made. But at the moment, this progress is completely eaten up by the increase of aquaculture production. So the net demand on forage fish still increases and is not decreasing. Another solution is to use different fish species. So those fish species that are omnivorous, like tilapia or pangasius or carp, with those species, it's possible to completely replace fish-derived protein by plant-derived protein. So in principle here, the feeding problem is completely solved, and it's no surprise that these fishes now are heavily increasing on the market. But these are all freshwater fish, and we are talking here about health and sustainability of the oceans. What's now with the argument that marine aquaculture saves marine fish stocks? And here we can say a clear no. It's in fact inverse. So we have to have severely overfished fish stocks to make aquaculture profitable. As one example, I'm showing you here the recruitment of the European eel. Recruitment levels of small eels, so-called glass eels, arriving here are down to 1% of the original levels. And actually, eel is one of the few species listed in the red list, and it's still exploited by fisheries. You see in the second diagram the increase in uh, the production of fattened eels. So they are not based on the complete life cycle. It's just that small eels are caught and fattened for, to then later be uh, sold on the, <clears throat> on the uh, food, global food market. And this only became profitable when the, wild, when the catch of wild eel um, decreased dramatically. The same situation happened in cod. Here, fortunately, <clears throat> the Barren Sea cod stock recovered due to good management. And many of the cod aquaculture facilities that had been built up during the years when cod was in, in a very bad shape, they are now basically not working anymore because it's not worth to produce cod with the relatively expensive aquaculture settings. Another sustainability issue with aquaculture is uh, that it needs space and that it needs very, um, uh, very pristine uh, and very uh, vulnerable space in particular in coastal ecosystems, if you think, for example, of crustacean and here shrimp aquaculture. So this picture shows you a temporal comparison uh, over 20 years how the mangrove forest uh, in Honduras has been converted. But this I could show you similar pictures from other um, Asian countries. So Honduras is now not a particular bad example, but it's a very well worked out example from uh, the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment. Um, so why is this conversion a problem? Um, this conversion is a problem because the very valuable uh, mangrove forests are destroyed that are, uh, provide coast protection and at the same time um, collect sediments so as to help uh, making the land raise in the face of uh, sea level rise. So what could be a sustainable solution? A sustainable solution could be that we um, farm down the food web. So we should not fish down the food web, but we should farm down the food web, meaning that we should tackle lower trophic levels for our aquaculture. And these lower trophic levels could be filter feeders, like oysters or these mussels on rope culture. Or it could even be algae, so primary producers. And common to both um, such types of aquaculture that's often then called mariculture is that they at the same time tackle an additional problem which is nutrient pollution. So by not needing to feed them additionally, um, we, we do not have additional input of nutrients, which would be the case in fish or shrimp aquaculture, but we even can extract nutrients that then is um, incorporated in the biomass of mussels or algae. Another idea is to have small, self-contained, little enhanced ecosystems 
in multi-trophic aquaculture. Mm. These systems are very much still in the experimental phase, so here science still has a lot to contribute. Basically, what we try is to have the primary producers and or the filter feeders together with the consumers. That's for sure something that could work, but at the moment it will not work uh, at a price level that's competitive on the world market. So, what are our take-home messages? Um, I hope uh, I could make clear that at the moment many aquaculture practices in particular with marine fish are not sustainable. We are taking away protein for human consumption and we are not saving the fish stocks. To the contrary, such aquaculture uh, for very high priced fish is only profitable because the wild populations have been decimated. And to save fish stocks, we have to better manage fish stocks. Solutions to improve sustainability is farming down the food chain, go for mariculture, go for bivalves, or maybe even go for algae. And maybe also, now still in an experimental phase, go for multi-trophic aquaculture.